right now on Upfront. The big spread. A fight for America's future. Democratic delegates returning home this weekend at the party's push for enthusiasm in Chicago. We've got to work to make sure that this energy is continued. Vice President Kamala Harris officially accepting the nomination. Five weeks ago today, President Biden dropping out, upending this convention and the race for president. It's been the honor of my lifetime to serve as your president. I love the job, but I love my country more. Wisconsin, front and center in it all. That rally inside Pfizer Forum, the Trump campaign barnstorming the swing states. She did not get one vote in the primary. This is a coup. I basically live in Wisconsin now. Now, the big players are here. What is your biggest concern that you see in Wisconsin? Just some two months to go. The dead heat, the push for swing voters. A special edition of Upfront from inside the United Center starts now. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us from the floor of the convention at the Democratic National Convention here in Chicago. Now 72 days until Election Day. Wisconsin's Democratic delegates returning home this weekend. Both conventions now in the books, the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee and the Democrats here in Chicago. The capstone Thursday night, just weeks after President Biden dropped out, Vice President Kamala Harris officially accepting her party's nomination for president. And like always, Wisconsin now front and center. I accept your nomination to be president of the United States of America. This weekend, it's Kamala Harris's Democratic Party. Just weeks after President Biden dropped out of the race, upending this convention in Chicago and the entire race for president. Biden, who just weeks ago was preparing a Thursday night primetime speech, delivered a farewell Monday night. Can I just get your quick reaction, Governor, to President Biden tonight? It was beautiful, beautiful speech. It, it, it was a good healing way to heal and a good way to go forward. I know that you have known and been close with Joe Biden for a very long time, both uh, serving in Washington, D.C. You told us before that uh, you were part of kind of that transition and the shakeup just a month ago. What do you make of the reception that he got last night and what you saw uh, on stage? Listen, Joe Biden was beloved by everybody, no matter where they were on determining that he needed to take to step back. There was nobody that doesn't appreciate what a great transformational leader he has been, up to and including stepping up four years ago uh, when we saw the monstrous uh, rise of Donald Trump uh, 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 again. Uh, you know, beating one I think is one of the most formidable candidates we've ever had, Hillary Clinton. So qualified, and yet uh, Donald Trump prevailed. The week, a delicate balance. Democrats with a nod to President Biden, yet quickly pivoting to Election Day and Kamala Harris. Listen, you're in tune with black voters in Milwaukee, you're in tune with young voters. What's happened over the past four weeks? Yeah, over the past four weeks, there has been a heightened level of excitement. Uh, places that I've gone that I traditionally haven't had political conversations, uh, be it the locker room at the gym or be it, you know, people who've texted me uh, about how to get involved, people that didn't even text me when I was running. What do you do after the convention is over this week between now and November 5th? What is, what you know, what what's your priority? Well, my first priority, you'll probably get a couple days rest and, uh, uh, then, uh, you know, start canvassing and hitting the doors. <laughs> you can get in there too. You can get in there too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the assembly together. So uh, now she's the dean. Yeah, and la so. last last convention we went to together was yeah, oh. 2000. We have a story we'll tell you off camera. Okay. Uh, way <laughs> off camera. <laughs> Yeah, I want to get your reaction too. Were you in here for Walls or you could hear you got yeah, it right up there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? Walls walking in here and, and starting his convention with the Wisconsin delegation. I mean, other than crappy sports teams in Minnesota, he sounds a lot like us, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we're very similar upper Midwest and to have those values, you know, I think that's gonna help Wisconsin well, I, I come across the like finish line. California, we proudly cast our four hundred and eighty-two votes for the next president, Kamala Harris delegates with a ceremonial roll call after virtually nominating Harris and Walsh to the top of the ticket, Harris watching from Milwaukee and addressing the convention virtually before officially accepting the party's nomination Thursday night here at the convention. What is this moment like? Did she do what she needed to do tonight? Oh, nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. 
She demonstrated who she is, how she understands working people's struggles. She demonstrated that she's tough, that she believes in America so deeply in a way that makes everyone want to believe in America. She demonstrated whose side she's on, and she called on all of us to be on America's side. This isn't about her. It's not about Donald Trump. It's about this whole country. What do Democrats need to do now less than 80 days out in Wisconsin? Just keep working at it. We're going to be calling. We're going to be doing doors. Everything we have to do to make sure that she wins and Tim Walz wins also. Enthusiasm among Democrats jumping some 20 points in Wisconsin after President Biden dropped out. The race now tightening. The question whether it will last. Democrats still have a lot of work to do. Democrats have a lot of work to do. This is great. She's going to get a bump out of this. That's outstanding. She had an awesome, awesome rally, very energized in Milwaukee on Tuesday night. But the work is not done. It is not done. Donald Trump has won the presidency before. We cannot take our foot off the pedal. We'll continue to do that from this leading into the debate uh, next month. She'll continue to work after that. And I think she's going to be elected the 47th president of the United States on November 5th. And now, all the attention and resources pouring into Wisconsin. In a must-win state for Democrats and Republicans, the presidency and U.S. Senate at stake. I mean, leaving here after Thursday night, a key state like Wisconsin, how critical is it and, and what's the message? It's vital. I mean, first of all, the destiny of the Senate with Tammy Baldwin, um, we, we really need a person like her there. I mean, you guys have a... In many ways, we're Jersey jealous. You have a lot of things. You're the, one of the most important swing states in the country. You have one of the most important Senate races in the country. So your power at the polls is bigger than a lot of other states. So I, I've been out there once. I was out there a few weeks ago. I'm going to be out there many times again. Compare the energy that's been in the United Center compared to what Democrats were feeling four weeks ago. Look, it's, it's, there is a definite difference that's... I mean, it's like you're at a whole new level of energy, and it's not a reflective of how great of a president uh, President Biden was, but he showed that he has this keen understanding of where the country was and did a courageous George Washington-like thing. So this is, folks are saying it. We haven't had this energy uh, since really the 2008 uh, Obama years. Um, but at the end of the day, this is good, but it's still not uh, the finish line. We've got to keep on going, keep the foot on the gas. David Pluff, who managed former President Barack Obama's campaign, now a top advisor on the Harris team, and with us one-on-one -on -one in Chicago. We're now less than 80 days out. What do you see as, as the biggest challenge from now until Election Day for the campaign and what you're doing? Well, first of all, there's a lot of enthusiasm for Kamala Harris, which is great, because that's volunteers in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, all the states knocking on doors. But a lot of people don't know her. Her biography, her values, her upbringing, we got to fill in those blanks. We got to fill in what she wants to do as president and contrast that with what Donald Trump would do as president. So it's a lot of business to get done in 11 weeks. And early voting starts in most battleground states in a matter of weeks. Why were you brought into the campaign? Well, this is an unprecedented situation. Uh, you basically got to build uh, and win a presidential campaign in less than 100 days. So I've known Kamala Harris a long time, love her, trust her. I know the campaign team well. So they're just looking to add some arms and legs on top of what is already a great campaign. Republicans have criticized her as well for not doing any interviews, any news conferences since the rollout. Why is that? Is that, is that a strategy? Well, first of all, she's been talking to the reporters traveling with her, taking questions. She'll do more of that. She committed to doing a sit-down interview of some sort by the, by the end of the month. She'll do that. I've run presidential campaigns. So here's, by the end of this campaign, Kamala Harris will have done debates, speeches, town halls, interviews, uh, discussions with influencers, a lot of interviews with local stations like your own. What is your biggest concern that you see in Wisconsin in terms of winning the state? As you know, 10, 20, 30,000 best voters right. are going to decide that. Well, that's what's the biggest concern. It's just going to be close. Yeah. So I think Kamala Harris has the enthusiasm required to build the kind of organization to win a close state. The Wisconsin State Party under Ben Wickler is a great organizing machine. So there's good apparatus there. The folks in that state have won a lot of close elections up and down the ballot over the last few years. So uh, we're very confident in that. But, but in this election, you know, Wisconsin's not going to be decided by more than a couple of points. You know, unless Donald Trump really closes poorly, I still think Kamala Harris has some upside uh, that's, you know, even greater than where we see the race today. But at the end of the day, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Nevada, North Carolina, uh, Georgia, 
they're all going to be super close. And so Wisconsin was tight as a tick in 2016. It was in 2020. Mm -hmm. We expect a similar race, and so we're building a campaign to win that kind of election. Can she win the White House without winning Wisconsin? Sure she can, but it's very hard. I mean, I think Wisconsin and Michigan are two states you definitely want to go blue. You want to add Pennsylvania to that in the second congressional district, then you're there. But Georgia, North Carolina, Nevada, Arizona, the reason it's so important, because I do think it's true a month ago in the Biden-Trump race at that point, post-first debate, yeah. this was really just down to the blue wall. Kamala Harris has brought back in those western and, and southern states. The Sun Belt states. I, you just very, came out and said that. Very, very important. Okay? You think that's winnable. Of course. They're all very close right now. And so, uh, listen, let's compare where we were a month ago. Donald Trump and his campaign were saying they're going to compete in Minnesota, New Jersey of all places, even New York. I think those days are over. We're back to the core seven battlegrounds in the Congressional District of Nebraska. If you look at them, you know, yes, if you don't win a Wisconsin and you win an Arizona, they're close in the electoral votes. Yeah. But Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania still, I think, are at the top of the list in terms of where you want to put your effort. But now you've got the, and here's where the excitement matters. She'll have the financial resources and the people resources while you're throwing everything you can in a Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. And I mean everything. You also can then run vigorous campaigns in those southern and western states, which is so incredibly important. We'll, we'll end with this, but <clears throat> broaden this out. You've, you've been doing this a long time. You've run a lot of campaigns, you've, Obama. What have we seen in this past four weeks for the Democratic Party? How unprecedented is this moment that we're in? Yeah, and it's been a really strange campaign. Uh, so I think when you're living through history, sometimes it's, it's hard to appreciate that you actually are. Uh, so I think what's amazing is that Joe Biden made a selfless decision to step down, number one. Number two, Kamala You don't think Harris, he was forced out? No. I mean, that's a, a decision a president's going to make. Uh, and obviously, we had members of our party of differing views, but it's his decision. He made it. I think we all owe him a debt of gratitude for that. And now the polls are incredibly tight in Wisconsin as our coverage from here in Chicago continues. Up next, the Republican response, the impact of any post-convention bump, and what's next? Republican strategist Bill McCaution with us in Chicago next.